Hello and welcome back to the channel guys. Today we will be discussing and learning about constants in Go programming language. Firstly, what is a constant? A constant is such a value which does not change during the course of the entire execution of a computer program. So I declare a constant which is a is equal to 5, then a should be equal to 5 at all times during the execution of the program. In this video, we will discuss about the naming conventions of Go constants as well as the two type of constants in Go which are typed as well as untyped constants. So let's quickly get started. Now I'm pretty sure when we are new to Go, most of us would be very eager to name our constants something similar to this one where we have all of the letters in capital or uppercase. Now this is not generally how we go about doing things in Go. One of the major reasons being that you might remember from our previous discussions that anything that begins with an uppercase in a Go program is an exported entity. So you might actually go ahead and declare this constant with a capital G in front of it and it will become available to other packages which will make use of the package main. But that might not always be our intention. As far as naming constants in Go is concerned, we stick either to camel case or to pascal case. Let me show you examples of both. I will quickly get rid of this and I will declare a constant with const and I will say go constant one. Or let me use a short name go con one. Um, and as far as camel case is concerned, we can use go con and um, let's call it go con two. Now the thing to notice here is that this constant would be exported by the package main, whereas this constant will be visible only inside the package main. Next, we'll firstly be discussing type constants. So let us give a type to both of these. Let us say gocon1 is an integer and gocon2 is a float 64. And then we give values to constants which will not change throughout the execution of our program. So let us say this one is 12, whereas this one is just six. I can go ahead and run this and I see that Go does not complain that we are not making use of constants that we just declared above. So that is a kind of an advantage you get over variables that you can have unused constants in your program. So we saw that we have declared these two constants. Now let's quickly try to make use of these two constants and let us try to check their values as well as their type. So I'll use a printf statement here where I will print the value uh, and as well as the type of the constant gocon2 as well as the constant gocon1. Let's go ahead and try to run this. And we see that the value of gocon1 happens to be 6 and its type is integer. And the value of gocon2 is 12 and its type is float64. Until now, it is all going as expected by us. Let us now try to see what happens when we try to change the value of our constant. So if I say gocon2 should now be equal to 24, um, I go ahead and try to run this and I get a compilation error which says cannot assign to gocon2 because it is a constant. So I'll get rid of this and let me try to show you something which is very important which is uh, the fact that a constant should actually be assignable at compile time. So if I say uh, const go con, uh, let's uh, call it go con three um, and it can be float uh, 64 and we try to assign it the value of math.sqrt which is a function for uh, calculating square roots and let's say we want the square root of 60. Uh, okay, float 64. And when I try to run this program, I see that the compiler tells me that the constant initializer math.sqrt60 is not a constant. Now, what do we actually mean by that? Because the square root of 60 is always a fixed value and therefore it should be a constant. 
So why is the compiler screaming at us? You know, like uh, you are not supplying me with a value which is a constant. Well, that is because this value actually uh, cannot be calculated at compile time, but this value can cal can be calculated only during runtime. So during compile time. The compiler sees this as a value which may vary and which is not a constant value. And therefore, it tells us that we cannot initialize the constant gocon3 with a value which is not a constant as far as the compiler is concerned. The next thing we are about to see is also very interesting. Let me quickly get rid of the math uh, package as well as the statement. We don't need them. And let me write a few lines here. Um, I say that gocon2 int equal to 50. So what I'm doing here is that I am redeclaring gocon2. Uh, first time it was declared outside of the main function and the second time it is being redeclared inside the main function. And then one more time we are checking the value as well as the type of gocon2. Now before we actually go ahead and hit run, why don't you just take a minute and try to tell me in the comments below what will be the output of this program. Will, will, will it even compile and if it will compile then what will the actual output of the program be. Let's just see how many of you get it right. Okay so when I go ahead and run this. Well the first time I see that the value of gocon2 is 12 and it is a float 64 which was as it is declared here. But the second time after the execution of this line, we see that gocon2 is now a type integer as well as has a value of 50. Now what is going on here? Someone might uh, tell me that I just told them that we are not allowed to do this. We are not allowed to change the value of a constant. Well, that is exactly what we are not doing here. Uh, so this statement changes the value of the constant. But this statement on line number 16 actually declares a new constant which is called gocon2 which is local to this main function and this constant gocon2 shadows the constant declared globally on line number 8. So ahead of line number 16 wherever we will use the value of gocon2 we will find that to be equal to 50 and its type to be an integer rather than the value of 12 and its type to be a float 64. So I hope that was clear. I'd like to repeat it one more time. On line 16, we are not changing the value of the constant gocon2, but we are simply creating a new constant with the same name, which shadows the value of the gocon2, which was declared outside of the main on line number eight. The next thing to note is that constants can be used wherever you can use variables. But the thing to note here, just as in the case of variables, is that the type of a typed constant in go is fixed and there will be no implicit type conversion for a typed constant. Let us see an example. So firstly, I'll get rid of all of this code, which we really don't need now. And I will write down an example over here. Suppose I have a variable called a, uh, which is of type int 16 and has a value of five. Now I try to add gocon1 to a. Uh, again, uh, before I hit run, I want all of you to tell me what the output of the program would be. At least make a try at it and let's see who gets it correct. So if I hit run, I can see that we are performing an invalid operation on line number 16, uh, which is gocon1 plus a because they have mismatch types. Gocon1 is of type integer, whereas our variable a is of type in 16. So this is the limitation or you can say the feature or the characteristic of typed constants that they will not behave differently according to the context in which they are being used. With this, we come to our last topic for today, which is an untyped constant. So suppose I declare an untyped constant here, which is gocon3. And since it's untyped, we don't really specify a type. And if I come here and add gocon3 with a, let us see what happens. And fair enough, we see an output on the screen, which is 11, which is the sum of gocon3, which is 6, and a, which is 5. 
So what just happened here? Instead of making use of a typed constant whose type is fixed, we made use of an untyped constant which takes the type as needed by the context of its usage. So in this case, our untyped constant gocon3 acts as an int16. And to really be able to augment this example, uh, let us take a variable b which is of type float64 with a value of 5.5 and we try to add gocon3 along with b. Let us see what is the result that we will get on running this program. We see an output of 11.5 which is the sum of 5.5 which is b as well as 6 which is gocon3. So it's easy to see that in this case our constant gocon3 took the type of float64 because it was being used in a context of being added to a variable of type float64. And that was all about constants guys. All of the code that you just saw has been updated in this repository aedorado slash learning go and the file name is constants.go. So do check it out. Apart from that, are you enjoying learning go? Do tell me in the comments below. And if you find the content of the video helpful, please do hit the like button. If you find the content of my channel helpful, please hit subscribe. You can also hit the bell icon to never miss any new updates. And like always, thanks a lot for watching guys.